Hello, Pisces. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. If Pisces is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there is anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Pisces, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Look at that beautiful sun energy. The 19th mystery of the tarot, the sun card, very strong, very bright, very clear, healthy and wealthy energy. This is really something else. Oh, look at that, the lover's card. Well, let's see what's going on. Let's see what we are committing ourselves to. We've got a lot of these a lot of these very alchemical cards, right? We've got the um, the art or temperance. We've got, of course, the emperor. We've got the lover's energy. This is really this is really something special. Um, let's select our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Weight Tarot, and this is just one card we select at random. We'll set it down over here. We'll put our frog friend right on top. Now, we're not going to look at that card until the very end, okay? And hopefully it will tie everything together, give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. So let's look at this energy now. This is really something nice. We've got major, 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 major. We've got um, a lot of fire. We've got a little bit of water. We've got some air. What we don't have is any really solid earth energy okay I feel like this is something that you feel very strongly but there is a reluctance to solidify this energy to ground it to really give it form to crystallize it to bring it down you know into the concrete world let's start with the Sun card though because I feel like you're really you're coming into this really bright energy. This it, It's very clear. This is perhaps, um, it, it seems like it's a full kind of enlightenment. It feels like you're, you're going to be experiencing um, a spiritual awakening, a kind of um, a full chakra activation. It feels like your aura is really being cleansed and it's really being um, amplified. You know, I feel a real radiance coming from you right now. And with that, I feel a lot of confidence. I don't know if there's something in your life, maybe some spiritual progress that you've made. Maybe there's some career or work-related things going on that are giving you this boost, right? I feel a real boost of confidence with you, of um, radiance, of creativity, of clarity. You're in this energy right now, or perhaps in the next couple of days, that nothing is hidden from you. Every You could see everything. The sun shines on everything equally. There are no shadows at, at high noon, right? You can see it all, right? And this is an energy that's quite blinding. And I feel as if part of you, right, perhaps a part of your personality, lower self or something, is feeling a little bit blinded by this energy. This is so bright. This is your true self, right? This is your personality kind of um, having doubts, perhaps. This could be a little bit of ego rebelling against whatever changes are being considered. Whatever it is that we are kind of feeling. It's kind of like we get this... The Sun card has so many different levels to it. 
But in the one sense, we get so confident that we think we can do everything. This is kind of an invincible card. So we feel like we can do everything and anything. But then there's still part of us that, you know, this this part here that says, wait a minute, I can't do everything. Let's not do anything risky or dangerous or stupid. Um, let's realize that we're still human beings. We're still um, fallible. We still are vulnerable. Um, and in a certain sense, that's a good thing. Keep us in check, right? Because the sun here just wants to go blazing through the universe, right? Just doing everything. Nothing can harm it. It is infinite and eternal. Um, we know that's not true, though. You know what I mean? But there's that feeling. There's that. It, it can become overconfident. This is also the light of our true self that does see everything. This is the eye of God, Goddess, Deity, right? Our guardian angel, our spirit guide, our ancestors, our higher self or true self that is blazing through the universe, right, at however many miles an hour. And our personality may not be able to see everything that this card can see, that this energy, that this deity, you know, this part of ourselves, true self, whatever you believe in, whatever you believe in. We can't really see everything. So we're still going to have doubts. We're still going to think, gosh, I... I know this is something that spirit is has intended for me, but I just don't yet see the advantage of it. And I think spirit is urging you toward some union. And this could literally be a union between lower self and higher self, between personality and your your spirit. But I feel like we're still we're having doubts, we're unsure of, of why spirit is taking us in this direction. We've had a lot of very mystical readings for you, Pisces. You have this very intense aura. I don't know what it is about you, but you've, you've got this real connection. You're going through a lot of these spiritual processes, and this is, this is one of the highest ones. I think your, I think your higher self is asking you to unite with it to become one you know in in your self in your soul to become unified to kind of trust in the process trust in where the sun is taking your life and the things that it's bringing to you and the lover's card now maybe this is a relationship this could be a romantic thing right we see a um we see this emperor energy in the position of your environment or of in your relationships. This is either your environment or your relationships or the relationship with the environment. I wonder if spirit is, is pointing us to this person, is asking us um, or instructing us, not even really asking. I don't think higher self, I don't think spirit asks, right? Um, I think spirit is showing you the way to this emperor. Now, whoever, who this person is, I don't know. Could be just an Aries person in your life. Doesn't have to be gender specific. An Aries energy. It could be a, um, rather confident, assertive person generally, Right? It could be someone in a higher position of authority. Yeah. It could be, um, it could be you, right? It could be you in the sense that whatever obstacles we're facing right now, whatever, I see down below we have the seven of wands. I feel like we're, now just bear with me, we'll get to the point here. I think you're kind of that, that middle staff there. We just feel like we're not really up to snuff. We're not up to the task. We're not meeting life. We're not meeting our challenges 
full on because look at this. We've got a nine up here and a seven down here. This is how we feel. This is how we want to be, right? We feel like the circumstances, the challenges, the environment is too much for us sometimes. Sometimes we feel, we feel a little bit weak, right? We feel like it's hard for us to keep fighting against these obstacles, to keep standing up against all of this whatever, the opposition. So we feel like we are being slowly worn down, we're being slowly defeated, that we're getting weaker and weaker against these forces, right? What we want to feel, look at these two cards are so different. Look at these two cards. Which one do we want to be, right? Well, I think we want to be sun and moon conjoined into the strength. And what is the sun and the moon conjoined? Well, it's the sun card conjoined with the moon, the moon card, Pisces energy, right? So what we really want is not to feel like we are frail human beings, right? Which, I mean, let's face it, we all are to some degree. We want to feel like we are infused with the power of spirit. We are strong, that we are united with our higher self and we can conquer anything. We want to feel like we are that sun, you know. We have doubts. We're human. We have weaknesses. We're human. Most of us, I think. So what spirit is asking of you is to accept this energy into your life accept this sun whether this is um, a higher aspect of yourself whether it's god goddess deity or just spiritual light spiritual force and fire generally whatever it is that you believe in this higher power whatever it is you worship you know if we accept that into our pisces personality we have sun and moon conjoined. And that creates an emperor. Right? This create this is what we want. The emperor is not weak. The emperor is strong. The emperor has this strength behind it. The strength of higher self, God, goddess, deity, of the, the mandate from heaven. Right? In, in ancient China, that was that was what gave the ruler the authority when they had the kind of the divine sanction, when spirit said, you are the one. And I think that's what spirit's trying to say to you right now. I feel like part of us is rejecting it. We have the eight of swords. We have the five of swords. This reading could resonate on many different levels for, for many different people that are watching. Okay, I'm tr trying to kind of cover most of the main ones that I'm feeling. It could be a relationship. It could literally be very on the nose. That spirit is telling you, you may feel a little, um, you may feel a little shy or inferior or not good enough, but you need to go after this emperor person, this Aries person in your life because they are your soulmate. You may not be feeling like it. You may be feeling, well, I'm not, I'm not good enough for, for that person or that's, there's some, there's always going to be a reason why we're not, we're not as good as we want to be, right? As strong, as healthy, as, as active, as creative, as smart, as funny. You're never going to be as funny as you want to be, right? We try though, right? Um, but spirit is saying, no, you have to be strong. You are this strong individual and you need, you need to go after that Aries person because that's who you're meant to be with. This could be a soulmate reading. This could be the first, you know, truly uh, soulmate reading that we've had here. And we have this art or temperance card, which is showing the perfect marriage. Right? It shows the perfect blending together, this art or temperance card of sun and moon, fire and water, earth and sky, you and your soulmate. And we can, of course, look at the soulmate as our higher self, God, Goddess, Deity. That's our soul's mate, right? 
just depends on how we want to look at it, depends on how it manifests. Now, we didn't talk about this Three of Cups in the, the recent past. I feel like the Three of Cups was, um, this is something in the recent past that is, it's kind of gave you that boost. It's the reason at the beginning I said there's this like surge of confidence in you. Um, it, it's something, something that happened recently. It could just be you had a really good day. You made a lot of progress at work. You worked through some emotional issues privately. Um, you had just a great time out with friends, right? Had one of these, these uh, occasions, an evening where you just felt like you were kind of your best self, right? You were really on point that night. You were funny, you are smart, but you weren't cocky and arrogant. You were just, you, really, you were comfortable and confident, right? And you got to really express yourself. And I think that felt really good. And Spirit is saying, yes, that is who you are. That, that is, that is you. Not this kind of uncomfortable, I'm anxious, I feel like I say the wrong things, I'm not very funny. Trust me, I, I know a lot about this seven. I know a lot about this sound of want. Um, feeling like we're just not quite on par with the people around us, right? But that that other occasion, that other night, maybe this was a meeting at work, maybe this was just a, maybe I had to give a presentation, maybe this was something at school, maybe this was just a short interaction with a group of people where you felt like you were on it. You were saying the right things, you were standing up tall, you were shining, you were the sun card. This was the boost that you that you received, okay? However it, it happened. And I think now you're seeing like, well, I, I, I feel that boost, I feel that's, that's who I am. Spirit saying, yeah, that is who you are. So we can continue working toward being comfortable and calm and confident in all situations. It's never going to be like that permanently, right? I mean, you know, we're going to always go back and forth between these two. So this emperor energy, for some of you, that's going to be you, right? That's you stepping into your confidence, stepping into your kind of leadership, being comfortable with yourself in any environment, making decisions, talking to people, doesn't matter what their station is, what your station is. For others, um, that is that card is a representative of your higher self. For others, that's going to be your soulmate. That's going to be someone that spirit is saying you need to go, and this is this is who is meant for you. So maybe you already know who this person is. But either way we slice it, right? Spirit is telling you that it's time for you to unite with this emperor energy. On whichever level this is resonating, it's time to unite with that emperor energy. Okay, whether it's you, whether it's God, goddess, deity, guardian angel, whether it's your soulmate and another person, it is your beloved in one way or the other. Okay. But we have some doubts. We have an eight of swords that we're kind of looking at in front of us. This, all the reasons why we, um, we're not going to make progress with this. These are all the things that are, are kind of in the way of that. And it's mostly the mental stuff. You know, it is um, the only... The, the hindrances to our progress are illusory. They're made up, right? We're creating bars to this cage that we're in. We're imagining the bars in front of us so well that we start assuming they're real. I can't, I can't go for it. I can't do this. Whatever the excuse is. So we've got to get out of this air energy. This is not, um, this is not helpful at all, obviously, right? So this is, this is the main obstacle, but it also comes with this five of, of swords. I like the five of swords in this situation because it's the active, the eight, even number, it's kind of a steady state. It's a, it's a form, right? It's a, a cage. 
The five, though, is change. It's an active number. So really, it's just kind of all we need to get out of here to make progress. All we need to do is blow a really strong wind and clear out all this negative thinking. This is the negative thinking that gets in our way. Negative thinking comes from a certain part of our mind, our ego, or something that is just, it's stuck in this. It's the ego of this seven of wands down here that just wants to reinforce its own beliefs. So it's going to pull all this air energy around it, and we're going to be we're going to be hindered from making progress. I don't think this is any match, right? This kind of, this, this is like a shield here that's kind of preventing us from getting from here to here. This is the wall that is in between the two paths, right? We've got to get rid of this wall. We've got to just, we've got to, what we don't realize, again, is that all we have to do is whoosh, the wall comes down. It's not real. It's not really there. So by changing the way we think, put our spiritual aspirations back on top, start telling ourselves that we can and that we will and that we are doing this, rather than, you know, finding all the reasons why I can't or shouldn't or won't or don't need to or not right now or maybe later or whatever it is that we tell ourselves, right? So let's turn, let's turn this right side up. Let's put spirit back on top. Let's give spirit the wheel here. Yeah, let's give spirit the wheel. The very last card on the path of the serpent is the ace of wands. New beginnings. This is like, after this union takes place, you're going to be kind of reborn into a different type of energy. You'll still be you, obviously. The world will still be the world. But it's like a fresh start. It's like a, it's just like you're coming out of a shell, you know? This is the real beginning of the rest of your life. As cliche as that sounds. And again, however this is resonating with you, if it's something that is... Um, you know, a union with you and your higher self, if it's a union with another person, if it's you stepping into this confidence. Um, I think this confidence is the, the boost that we had is just showing you um, that it is possible for you to move forward with this. Right. This is the kind of this is the boost that we needed to get into this sun energy a little bit to maybe get a glimpse of this. The nine of wands up here. To get a glimpse of what could be. And now we need to not let these obstacles get in our way. We need to get right over here to this emperor, this union, this strategy for the future. And commit ourselves to this life. Whether this is with another person. This doesn't have to be romantic. It doesn't have to be a soulmate. Maybe you're not into that. Maybe you already have your, your life partner. This is about you finding... Um, finding wholeness within yourself, right? Finding that sun that is you, your true self, the good and the bad, the higher and the lower. And it's through that union of you with yourself, whether that is manifested as a religious experience or as a romantic experience, it doesn't matter. It leads to a rebirth of this force and fire, this spiritual energy, this creativity, this light, this electricity. Well, let's look at the mystery card. The frog has been kind of sleeping on the job. It wasn't even sitting on the card there. Uh, well, thank you anyway, frog. We appreciate you. Still looking for a name for the frog. We've got our alien's name. It's Alien Simon Mork Ripley. But the frog, I don't know about the frog yet. Had a lot of suggestions. Um, I like Hermit the Frog. That that made me laugh. Hermit the Frog. I like it. Uh, but as far as the mystery card goes, stay, stay focused here. I want to see the earth energy, right? I want to show that all of this the uh, theory, all of this abstraction can be grounded, can be uh, concretized, right? Can be crystallized onto this plane in your life, in a real world kind of scenario. So, no. We've got the moon, which, you know what? This is even better. 
Because what did we start out by saying? That this union, this marriage, this alchemical marriage, this you know, spiritual union that we're talking about ultimately is between sun and moon. Between sun, right? Higher self, true self, God, goddess, deity, maybe the emperor, whatever it is. However it resonates with the moon. So by uniting sun and moon, we get this confidence and strength. We get this kind of rebirth experience, this complete whole foundational energy really I mean, this is this is where everything is going to begin so i think this is this is an even better confirmation card the sun and the moon conjoined creating this strength creating this this dynamic you know within you between you and and the universe or, or god goddess deity whatever you believe in this is the real union this is the real marriage that's taking place yeah. And if this is a soulmate situation with an Aries person, well, the sun rules. Anyway, so, you know, I think we've got a good match. I think this is, I think this is going to be just fine. Um, I still would like to see some earth energy. Maybe in the extended, we'll get some of that earth, the earth energy. Um, if you want to stick around for that, just click on the link that's up there. That will give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Pisces, but for every sign. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for letting me read for you. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.